Hey guys, my name is Jose Ocondo. I'm a Chattanooga based web designer and Webflow developer. And in this video, we're talking about carousels, tabs, and sliders. Um, so as long as I've been a Webflow developer, um, sliders have just been a big request from clients. And even when I haven't been the designer, um, they've been part of the project. So you have to be able to know how to use them. But unfortunately, they're just not the easiest components to use in Webflow. They're not super user friendly. So I decided, oh great, I'll create a tutorial video on this topic so that you guys can further understand how they're used and be able to um, implement them into your own projects. So um, I created this space logo uh, for one of those kind of like 30 day um, logo challenges. And I thought it'd be fun to use it for this project and create kind of like a co-working uh, website. Um, so we're gonna be taking this design and creating this website. Um, up here at the top, this is a slider it's where you can advance uh, through these photos. There's currently only three, but you can add as many as you like. Uh, we're going to be creating this awesome card slider that represent the uh, buildings of the co-working company and you can advance through the cards by clicking on these dot indicators and uh, we're also going to be creating this um, amenities slider with the tab component and i don't know if you noticed but as soon as the progress bar gets to the end it switches down to the next line and you can even click um, to advance uh, manually so um, then last of all, we'll work on this CTA section and the footer. And by the way, uh, with this CTA section, we're going to be using a CSS blend of multiply. So if you've ever uh, designed something and just wish like, man, I just, how do you do like multiply or overflow, not overflow, overlay, <laughs> soft light, hard light? How do you do those things in websites? Well, we're going to be actually tackling that. Um, this uh, has a, a background overlay that set to multiply. So anyways, pretty cool um, stuff. So I hope that you'll stick with me as we go through this. Um, before I begin, I just want to say a special thank you to Austin uh, Distal or Distal. Um, Austin, thanks so much for your photos. Austin took a bunch of uh, amazing photos of this co-working space called, uh, I guess, Proof. And so I used them throughout the website. And then I also used photos by Jaden Chong. And uh, he uh, has a smaller portfolio, but just beautiful photos of these buildings. And so I used those for the uh, co-working space cards. So anyways, uh, like I said, I hope that you're interested in this topic and that you'll follow along with me as we create sliders, carousels, and tabs. All right, guys, um, before we jump into Webflow, let's take a look at our design and just kind of strategize about how we're going to um, how we're going to create the foundation for this section. And essentially, when I look at it, there's two sections. There's the one on the right hand side that has the slider itself. And then there's a section on the left uh, that has our content. And to do that, we can use Flexbox. Um, so let's jump into Webflow here, add a section. Make sure that we um, set the tag to header and then add a div block inside of that section and we'll call it flex horizontal. And it's important to be um, thoughtful with these names because uh, later on down the line, we may need to reuse this element. And so it'd be great to be able to reference it and know like, oh, okay, that's the horizontal one. It's not the vertical one. Okay, um, so let's set it to flex and it's already set to horizontal and just by happenstance, uh, these are the exact settings that we need actually. Okay, so then we can add a, another div block and let's call it flex horizontal. Again, I'm referencing the name, but calling it child 50 because I want it to be 50% of uh, the parent's width. And there's two ways to do that. One is to hit expand here. And essentially what expand does is it makes all elements grow with equal and opposite force. So since there's two, they're not 50%. Uh, but I have found that sometimes depending on what you add or sometimes the spacing that you add to these, they can grow or shrink a little bit in unexpected ways. So I just prefer personally to use basis and add 50% basis. That's the way I know these are at 50%. Inside of the right hand child, I'll add a slider. And uh, let's do a little housekeeping before we actually start 
customizing this thing and let's give everything names so first of all we don't need the dot navigation so I'll create a class called display none and simply hide it and by the way we can use that class again later on anything that we um, don't want to be visible we can just add that class or even a combo class and it'll disappear uh, we're gonna call this hero slider arrow button And same thing over here. And then let's go ahead and name the slide itself. Here, a slider slide. And then in ascending order, let's go up and name the next elements up. Here, a slider mask. And I'll talk about what that does in a second. And then last but not least, the hero slider itself. Inside of the slide, let's add an image. And we'll call this hero slider image <laughs> not getting too creative here uh, let's go ahead and pick out our image that we need and uh, with this selected let's give it a width of 100 percent and a height of 600 pixels and doing that because uh, my design calls for a height of 600 pixels um, okay so you may have noticed that when I added that height, all of a sudden the image got really stretched looking and we're gonna address that in a second. First, let's go to the slide and we'll give it a height of 600 pixels as well. And then we'll go to the mask and let's talk about the mask before we make changes. So the purpose of the mask is essentially to reveal only the active slide. Um, kind of works like masks in Photoshop or Sketch, where if you put something inside of a mask, if even if that object exceeds the boundaries of the mask, you only see what's inside of the mask. Um, so for example, let's say I set the height of the mask to 200 pixels. Uh, well, we're only gonna see the 200 pixels of the image. So if I set it to 600, we're now seeing uh, the image itself. By the way, you could set it to auto, and you could also set the um, height of the slider itself to auto, and then the content inside will determine the height of the slider. But we want a fixed height uh, of 600 pixels just specifically for this design. All right, now let's talk about the image. Now you see it's a little bit stretched, especially when you look like right here, but let's say I set this to like 200 pixels. It looks really stretched and super ugly. <laughs> so let's address that. Let's add some a custom code um, to make sure that our image looks good, uh, even though we've got this really weird uh, setting. <coughs> Excuse me. And essentially we're gonna be using object fit cover to address that. So let's add an opening and a closing style tag. And essentially this is telling the browser, hey, we're this is a CSS, okay? And then we need to call um, the CSS class that we added for the image. Which I believe is hero slider image at our closing and opening brackets and then like I said we're going to be using object fit cover okay so make sure you add your little semicolon there and then uh, look over here in the top right when I hit save and close we should if I did this correctly uh, we should see it realign and get um, back to the original proportions okay great so now we can make it 600 like we had originally. Awesome. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna do is start uh, working on getting our um, buttons into the right place. So, uh, so to do this, let's go ahead and um, mess with the absolute positioning. Um, and uh, I think right now it's set to probably all right or something even though it's not displaying it's saying auto and I believe it's set to this um, so what we can do is set it to bottom right actually and you notice that it's hovering over here for some reason <laughs> and that's because uh, the height of our slider itself hasn't been uh, modified um, so just to, just make it easy to select these buttons again in the future I'm gonna make them 48 by 48 pixels and that's just because uh, these buttons are 48 by 48. Okay, and then with the hero slider selected, we need to give the slider itself a height of 600 pixels. So I think we could also set it to auto, and that also gives it a height of 600 um, because the elements inside are 600. But 
we want to do a little bit more than that. So to make room for um, our buttons down here, let's add 48 pixels. Um, so now the slider is set to 648, and you'll notice that our buttons are now down here, uh, which is perfect. And we need to allow for the uh, margin uh, between the buttons and the image, which is 32. So if I just add 32 in here, um, then we're now allowing room. And let's go ahead and um, we'll, give, we'll give one of these, uh, which one goes left and which one goes right <laughs> is the question. Uh, okay, so we'll call this a left arrow button. And we'll just use, um, I don't wanna mess with these settings because uh, you'll see why in a second, but um, I'm gonna use transform to move it over to the left, negative 48. Um, okay, so I chose the wrong one. Um, So I wanna delete left arrow button from here and add it to here, left arrow button. All right, so now we're getting the correct buttons in the right place. Um, and we can go ahead and actually delete these icons. The icons themselves, they're just icons. They don't actually have any functionality attached. Uh, what what makes the, the slider actually work is the link blocks here that we're uh, currently messing with. And then we need to make room for the margin here. Um, so if I go back down to here, I can just do minus 16 and that'll move it over. If I do x-ray mode, uh, you'll see them uh, over here on the right hand side. Um, with our hero slider, we can go ahead and get rid of that gray background. And um, why does this have margin? It's weird. Looks like it has a gray border. Okay. Anyways. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the last thing we want to do is, um, in the design, this is not flush with the edge. Uh, so technically, it's 94 pixels away from the edge, but we want to use a little bit more of a responsive unit. Um, so what we can do is, instead of 0%, we can make this 6 VW or viewport width. And that's gonna push it away. Again, it may not be exactly 94, but just so it kind of looks like the design. All right, and then inside of the button, let's go ahead and add our our, our circle. Um, so we'll just call this, oh, we need to add a div block. And it didn't get added to the button like I was hoping it would. Okay, there we go. And we'll call this um, arrow circle. Um, give it a border of two pixels with our brand blue and same height uh, as these link blocks, 48 by 48. Um, and the reason I'm not applying these settings to the buttons themselves is let's say that I wanna reuse this arrow circle later on, um, I might. Um, I don't want all this absolute positioning type stuff uh, to get added to that. <coughs> all right, and then if I disable X-ray mode, you'll notice that it's currently a box. <laughs> and that's because uh, I need to make my uh, corner radius 50%. By the way, that only works if um, it's a perfect square. Otherwise, uh, you get kind of this weird, uh, more oval shape than you do a circle. Okay, and then I can just duplicate that into this one. And then let's go ahead and add our actual arrow. And with the arrow circle, just to make sure that this is a little bit off kilter, uh, we can use Flexbox to get it uh, right in the middle. Let's give this a name to and we'll call it arrow circle arrow. Um, and then we'll copy and duplicate. And we need to give this, we need to declare either a width or a height um, so that the browser knows how to show this SVG. Um, so I'm gonna use 24 pixels. <coughs> 
Um, it was displaying correctly, but there are some browsers where if you don't declare a width or a height, uh, then your SVG doesn't show up at all. It just looks invisible. Um, so you had to make sure that you declare uh, a width or a height. And then we'll call this a uh, left arrow. And we'll just use transform, rotate, and rotate it on Z by 180 degrees. Okay, so I think that does it for the actual arrows. So if we click on here, this is working correctly. <coughs> Alrighty, <laughs> sorry, I'm coughing a little bit. Um, all right, so let's um, let's make our, our little caption area now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the um, the the parent element for this. Actually, if I add a div block, um, yeah. So if I add a div block, it's actually below uh, the arrows, and I don't want that, right? Um, so we're going to use absolute positioning, just like we did with these arrows, to make sure that this is in line with the arrows. So with the parent element, I'm going to set its position to relative. And what that does, uh, what the difference between static and relative is that static, any absolutely positioned elements ignore static. But if um, if a parent element has relative attached to it, then that absolute positioning now, it kind of treats it as its master and it says, okay, I'm positioned according to you. So um, we'll call this uh, hero slider uh, caption wrapper. Position absolute, like I was just saying, and look down here, it's targeting that flex child fit. That's because we set it to position relative. And uh, we want to set it to bottom left. We also want to give it a height and width of 48 pixels. And um, now we're in line with our buttons. So um, I want to make sure we're going to use Fluxbox to create this so that this line kind of expands or minimizes. So the way we can do that is, um, we know that this is set to uh, the button is moved over six VW, right? Um, whoops, I can't click. So uh, <laughs> what's going on is we need to set a Z index for things. So with the slider buttons, let's set a Z index to three. And with the caption, a Z index of two. All right, there we go. I can click on it. So Z index is kind of like telling you, uh, kind of like the pecking order of things. And something with a higher Z index will be above things with a lower Z index. So I want to make sure that the buttons are the highest so that nothing interferes with the functionality of moving the slider back and forth. But I want the caption to be clickable, so I have to give it a Z index of 2. So if we know that this is 6VW and this is 50, then if we make the width instead of 48, if we make it 44 VW, then that's going to bring it to the very edge of our buttons. And then we essentially just have to add padding. So 48 plus 48 for the two buttons, plus the 16 pixels of spacing in between them. So if I go to enable X-ray mode and hover over the 112, you notice that the padding is now uh, making sure that nothing is going to be over the buttons. <coughs> All right, let me add a paragraph. And let's copy this. Um, so I already did the paragraph styling, just that we wouldn't have to worry about that. I'm actually going to use a text block because I set the paragraphs to that gray. And uh, so there we have that. And with the caption wrapper selected, I'm going to make it flexbox and align to the middle. OK. Um, this particular text is a little bit bigger than normal paragraphs. So we'll create a new class called Paragraph Jumbo. And I think it's 18 instead of 16. OK. And, and then um, I think it's set to medium as opposed to regular. Yes. Okay, let me take off x-ray mode. 
and that is looking good. Um, I guess the only thing is I need to give some padding here to match the buttons. So we'll do 6VW. Okay, and then we'll add a new div block. And this is going to be our HR, so we'll call it HR Gray. And we'll sit, uh, set it to expand. Um, it's going to be a height of two pixels, and it's going to be our dark value at 12%. All right, so now we've got the HR line. Um, and uh, by the way, HR is an HTML, uh, how you introduce a line like this. Um, of course, I'm using um, a dev block and not an HR. But anyways, <laughs> um, I think the spacing was um, supposed to be 24. So we can just add that margin on either side, 24, 24, oops. Um, and now our HR is showing up appropriately. And as we minimize the screen, the HR line will get smaller. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to click wrap just to make sure that once it gets too small, this cascades down to the next line. And unless I'm wrong, I think we're done with the slider. Let's add uh, our other images. So um, over here in the navigator, we can actually just click on the slide and delete it and then copy and paste two more. And then we can just add our uh, next images. So um, I want this outdoor one to be next. And then I want the, uh, this kind of like um, on the balcony one to be last. So if we did that correctly, we now have got three images and object fit cover is working perfectly so that they're all 600 pixels tall, but displaying correctly. All right, really quickly, let's go ahead and work on this. I think this section should take a little bit less time. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, add that uh, background graphic. So if I use that same combo class of position relative, I can just simply add that uh, image directly into the file, to the box, I should say. And let's give it a class of icon hero background. We're going to set its position to absolute, top left. And um, um, I don't want it. Um, I don't want this icon to brush up against this over here. I want there to be a little bit of white space like we have in our design. So I think I can do like a max width of 44VW. Um, and that should work. Okay, so as we move in, it starts minimizing so that it makes sure it doesn't uh, butt up against the slider. Okay, um, next let's add our content and we'll work on the navigation last. Um, so we'll add another div block. Um, I don't think they got added into the right place. So let's move it over this way. There we go. And we'll call this um, hero content wrapper. So it's positioning to absolute, full, and then we'll use Flexbox uh, to align it vertically uh, in the middle. Okay, so then we can add um, uh, another box, div block, and this is going to be, um, uh, oops. It's not inside of, there we go. Now it's responding correctly. <laughs> um, so with this selected, oh, it looks like the, kind of what I mentioned with Z index, the icon is over. I think if we just move it, that might fix it. Okay, there we go. Then with the div lock selected, let's do max width 492 and have that here. 
and then we can add a heading. Oops. Um, add a paragraph and add a button. Okay. Um, like I said, I already styled our heading and our paragraph so that we don't have to waste time doing that. <laughs> and um, by the way, whenever you copy and paste from some programs, it carries over some of like the styling. We want to get rid of that and make sure it's not. Oh, apparently I misspelled co-working. Ooh, I don't like that. Okay. All right, but we do need to style our button. And so let's style the, the text itself first. <coughs> so I think the only difference is that it's a semi-bold. So if I just move it from normal to semi-bold, uh, that should be working great. And by a pass. And then next, let's work on the padding. So it's 12 top and bottom and 32 on the sides. We need to make it the background color our um, our blue, our brand blue, and then to get those um, that kind of like pill. What is it called? Pillbox. Um, uh, we can just give it a radius of something ridiculous like a hundred, and it'll give us that circular uh, side. And then we got to make sure we have the right um, margin, and that's twenty four. This has uh, it picks 10 pixels of margin automatically, paragraphs do. So if we just add 14, um, that'll give us the total of 24 that we need. Okay. And then there's a little bit of a shadow, actually not a little bit, a lot of it. Um, so we need to add these three uh, drop shadows down here. And the reason I use three is because um, it makes a little bit more of a realistic looking shadow. It's just a little bit softer and, uh, like I said, more realistic. So uh, zero in this case is 180 so that it points directly down. And then it's uh, one, two, and our dark value at 14. We'll add one more. And this one is 048, so 180. Four, eight, and our dark value at 12%. And then finally, one more with um, 1632. Our dark value at 20%. All right, so that created a nice soft looking shadow for our button. Let's give it a hover state. And hover, I want it to go to our darker blue. Okay, and previously for lengths, I set border color, font color, and background color to all have a transition of 200 milliseconds with ease. And that means that when we hover over it, it'll kind of ease into that background color nicely. <clears throat> okay, um, I think the last thing we need to do is our navigation. So um, not inside of this section, but um, just in the body itself, we'll add a nav bar. I have it above everything. And let's go ahead and give the nav bar a class. Nav bar. And set its positioning not to relative, but to absolute. And now you see that everything moved up and it's now in the top left. Uh, we can do the same thing, make sure it's top left and set its width to 50 VW, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, um, let's get rid of that background color and add our logo, whoops. Um, let's give our logo a class and I think it's 40 pixels tall, yeah. There we go. And then in terms of spacing, there's 24 pixels of spacing on top and 40 on the left. So we can just add that directly to our nav bar. So 24, 
40. And then um, let's go ahead and get rid of the container because we don't really need it. Get rid of that container. Then with the nav bar selected, use Fluxbox, align everything in the middle and to the left. All right, then let's work on these nav links. And I think they're almost, they're at 16. The only difference is they're semi-bold and they're blue. And let's go ahead and give them a hover state of our darker blue. Okay. And then uh, they've got 32 pixels of spacing between them. So um, if we just make this 16 on either side, and then let's bring the 20 down a little bit to like, uh, Let's just make it eight. Okay, we can delete these. And it's gonna be locations, amenities, contact. Amenities is really tough to spell. <laughs> okay. And with nav menu, let's add maybe, um, I think in this design, I basically uh, aligned it to the middle of this thing. Or maybe I didn't. Um, but I'd rather use uh, just spacing to the left of this. So let's try 32 to start out with, and that looks pretty good. Um, all right, let's expand here. And, oops, not that I'm seeing it. I think 32 uh, is maybe too little. So let's try 40 or maybe 48. <clears throat> Just a little bit more. <laughs> um, let's try 56. Okay. Um, alrighty. Um, I think we're done. This is all working. Um, the one thing I'll mention is uh, that I'd like to take care of is um, if you look at the button in particular, it looks quite a bit more bold than what the design has, even though I did set it to semi bold. And I think um, some of that has to do with uh, how browsers handle anti aliasing. So we can address that by using uh, something called font smoothing. Um, so let's collapse everything. Let's bring our HTML embed up to the top so we can find it easily later. And if we open up the code editor, um, we can add a little bit of CSS class, a little bit of custom code, I meant to say. And um, I've got it saved up here. We want to use WebKit font smoothing anti aliased. Okay. So if I did this correctly, uh, if you look over here um, at this heading, when I hit save and close, you should say it got kind of a little bit cleaned up. So not a huge effect, but now the button is looking really, really good. I feel like it actually looks how it's supposed to and um, everything is looking good. All right, so in the next section of this tutorial, we're gonna be creating this cool card slider that represents the um, locations of our co-working space. So stick around and uh, um, follow along with me as we create this card slider. All right, welcome back. We're now entering section two of our tutorial and we're gonna be building out this fun card slider. And I just have to apologize. I'm having some trouble with my throat, so hopefully I won't cough too much. All right, so here uh, with our body selected, we'll add another section and let's give it a class of section. <laughs> and um, if I'm remembering correctly, there's about 80 pixels of spacing between sections. Um, so we can add that here. And then we can add a combo class of a uh, light blue. And that will be our background color. And then there's 80 pixels of um, padding on top and bottom inside of the section itself. Okay, so inside of here, let's add a div block and we'll call this text align center. 
And essentially what we're doing is we're positioning the elements in the middle of the screen. So if I add our image, it's not showing up in the middle and it's gonna be this thing. And if I add a heading and make it H2, uh, it's showing up in the middle as well. So if I go back to text align center and uh, delete that, uh, they move over to the left. So it's just a nice, simple, easy way to get things to appear in the middle of the screen. Let's give this a class of icon, our locations. And I can't remember how big it is. Uh, 46 pixels wide. Am I recording? Yes, okay, <laughs> freaked out for a second. Okay, um, not inside of the text align center, but in the section, I wanna add our slider. And let's do the same thing that we did uh, previously. So for example, we don't need these arrows, so we can just add our display none class that we added previously. Um, we can take our uh, dot navigation and just call it a card slider dot navigation or dot nav I guess is fine and card slider slide and again in ascending order just naming everything card slider mask and finally card slider <laughs> okay so now what's different about this is that we want all of the slides to appear together on the same screen. Um, so what we're gonna do is with the card slider slide, give this a width of 344 pixels. Um, and we can just give uh, this next one over here the same uh, CSS class. Let's go ahead and push everything over 40 pixels. And then uh, remember the mask, the purpose of the mask is to reveal only the current slide. Um, and so like if we add a couple of these, um, the issue is that we're only getting one dot. Uh, you can't see them, but there's three, um, there's three slides. So with the mask, really what we need to do is make this also 344 pixels. Okay. Um, so if we did that correctly, now there's three dots for the three slides. Okay. Um, now, um, by the way, uh, just so that we can see things, um, let's grab the card slider, make it transparent, grab the slide itself and make it our background color, which is like a slightly darker light blue. And unfortunately we're not seeing the um, other slides that we had created, right? And again, that's because of the mask. Remember, it's hiding um, everything and only revealing the current slide. But uh, we don't want that in this case. We want to see um, the other cards. And so we just have to change overflow from hidden to visible. And now we'll see all of our other cards. Um, I forgot to add a little bit of padding to the top. There we go. And with the mask, no, with the card slider selected, let's add um, a little bit of padding, uh, maybe something like 6VW. Um, there we go. Actually, I want to do 7, no, wait. Yeah, 7.5. And uh, I'll show you why uh, in the next section. All right. Um, with the slide, I also want to give a max width because I want to be careful about uh, mobile phones. And we may run into a situation where, um, uh, like, most phones are uh, between 375 and 415 pixels wide. There's exceptions to that. But on the lower end, um, particularly like iPhone 4 through maybe 6 or some other models like that, um, uh, we may be brushing up against like the cards are too big for the phone. So we want to give a max width of something like... Um, uh, let's say, so we know that there's padding of 7.5. So I think if we do 100 minus 7.5 VW, minus 7.5 as well, 85 VW, no, plus 7.5, because uh, there's already 7.5 of padding over here. So at 92.5 VW, that's going to ensure that on mobile, there's at least 
um, 7.5 VW on either side. Okay, we got that taken care of. Let's go ahead and add our corner radius and our gobs and gobs of drop shadows. <laughs> okay, so click on this and it's 0120. 0, 0, and it's our dark value at 14. <clears throat> 0240 and our dark value at 12 and last but not least 480. So you notice this is a little bit smaller than uh, the button shadow. I just wanted this to be a little bit more subtle. Alrighty and there we are. Okay. Um, okay, so next is um, adding the image. Um, let's go ahead and add the brick building here. And you'll notice that um, uh, the building is quite large. Oh, by the way, um, uh, we need to set the mask height to auto and the card slider to auto. And now the slider is big enough to hold our cards. And this is the original ratio of the image, but we want to have these uh, four, three ratio. So the way we can do that is, let's give this a class of card slider image. We want the width to be 100%. And we know that the card sliders are 344 pixels wide. So for the height, all we have to do is 344 times 0.75 and 258 pixels. That is what's gonna give us our, our perfect 4-3 ratio. Now we're running into an issue where it's looking all stretched again, um, but that's an easy solution. We just have to come back up to our embed code and right here, next to here, a slider image, we can just do card slider image. And now our uh, thumbnails are looking perfect. Okay, so inside of the slide, let's add another div block, and this is gonna hold our content. So I'll call it card slider content wrapper. And Unless I'm mistaken, there's 24 pixels of padding on all sides. So we can just add that here. Add a heading and make sure that it's set to H3. And I've already uh, styled that for us. And then we need to add a paragraph. This is gonna say Chattanooga, Tennessee. And this is our overline. So we need to give it a little bit more styling uh, to make it look like the design. So it's at 13 with 0.75 pixels of letter spacing. So 13 over 16M. And uh, that's 20 over 13M. Um, we'll just say 1.5. It's all caps, 0.75, and I think it's actually uh, medium. Yes. Okay, and that looks like everything that we need. And then you notice there's spacing be, uh, below. So we can add that as a combo class because I don't want uh, for every single overline to have 40 pixels of margin bottom. Um, so add that there. And then let's add a text block. And this is gonna include phone number. And there's eight pixels of padding below this. So we can just add margin bottom eight. And add another text block and that will have our address. Oops. Um, we're running into the dot navigation kind of hovering over everything. Um, so let's go ahead and change that. And an easy fix is change the positioning from absolute. Again, it's hovering over things because it's kind of in its own dimension to static. And now it's below um, uh, it's below the uh, cards like we want them to be. 
Okay. Um, let's uh, actually change this to invert colors just so we can see them and we'll eventually change this. And they're currently not centered because there's 7.5 uh, VW of padding over here. So if we just do add that over here on this hand side, uh, it'll not be nice and centered. Okay, um, so this is Loveman building. And unless I'm wrong, I think we're done with the card. Okay, so now all we gotta do is copy and paste this a couple times. Two, three, four. And let's replace these images really quickly. Um, I love this image. This is so cool looking. Um, this one. And this one. Just want to make sure I didn't reuse any images. Alrighty. And then just to kind of like give the appearance of... Um, there being multiples. I'm just gonna add two copies of each slide. So we should have eight total. Um, perfect. Okay. So I think all we have left to do is to finish configuring the slider dots. Um, so the first thing let's check out is the padding on top. I click that. Um, instead of 10, this should be 40. Oh. Um, what if we kept it at 10 and did 30? Here we go. And um, I think that's it, except for changing the colors. Okay, so for the colors, this gets a little bit tricky. And by the way, um, to change the colors, or if you want to have them have like a border color instead of a fill. You can do all of that, but it requires a little bit of custom code. So what we need to do is first, we need to make sure that invert color is deselected. I know it's really hard to see them now, um, but when you have invert color selected, it kind of messes with this a little bit. We need to go ahead and publish this. Okay, and then if I right click on one of the inactive dots and hit inspect, um, then we pull up the slider dots here and we can figure out what is the class name that we need to identify. And by the way, if I click on this, um, just to test it out and make sure we're getting the right thing, um, we can always like change this to zero, zero, zero. Um, and you'll see that we're affecting the background color of the slider dot. So, so this class right here, W slider dot, is exactly what we need to address. So go back to here, activate our embed code, <laughs> open it up, and add a new class here. And we need to add our dot to affect the class. Open and close brackets. And basically we just want to affect the background color. And let's set it to uh, blue for now, just to make sure that um, we're actually affecting the correct thing. Ah, so here. Um, so now we know that we have the correct color. And if I go over here, I can steal the hex code for this. And we need to add um, our hashtag there. And I know it's at opacity 54%. And when you're writing CSS, you use um, decimal percentages, so 0.54. All right, but obviously we haven't affected our active dot. Um, so the way we do that is if I right click on the active dot, hit inspect again, um, I can look, see how this one has a combo class attached to it. <coughs> Excuse me. So I just copied that, opened the code editor, and then um, we need to copy the uh, thing above because this is a combo class, right? And then add a dot and W active. And then let's copy this stuff. And our background color is going to be our uh, brand blue. 
and opacity will be one. All right, so now our primary dot has the correct blue. By the way, you can affect the size of the dots. Like I said, you can make them have a color. You can get rid of the corner radius. Whatever you want to do, uh, you have to be using custom code, but you can you can manipulate the dot. And I think I want I want them to be a little bit more spread out. So instead of three, let's do eight. Oop, that's too much. Maybe six. Okay. Um, I think the last thing we need to do is, um, if I scroll to the right, we're getting this um, unfortunate horizontal scroll. Um, it's really, really ugly and has uh, poor development. <laughs> so the way we fix that is with overflow hidden. So with our um, section selected, I'm going to add a combo class called overflow hidden. <coughs> And over here in Overflow, just click the icon with the eye that has the line going through it. And now I can't scroll to the right. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. All right, so that does it for this section of the tutorial. So in the next one, we're going to be creating this really fun um, tabbed uh, autoplay where you can click on these elements to get the photo to change and it has a timer so it changes on its own so stick around and join me for the next section guys welcome back to section three in this section we're going to be tackling this really fun um kind of like a uh, feature list using the tabs component um, it is going to get a little bit complicated with absolute positioning and how we do that um, but i'll try to take it slow and make sure that you guys can follow along one little bit of housekeeping is I noticed that um, even though these have a corner radius of four, the images do not. And so easy fix for that is with the slide selected, just give it a, a overflow hidden. And now even the images have that nice curved uh, edge like we want. All right, so let's move on with body selected. Let's add a new section. Give it that same class of section that we created previously. And then um, uh, the first thing we want to do is add um, a flex box. So let's add a div block. And we can actually reuse uh, the previous um, classes that we already created. Um, so if I just type 50, it should pull up. Um, so copy and paste. And so now we have the kind of like the basic structure. Let me add a quick dummy section real quick. Um, I'll call it dummy and height 50 VH, just so that we can scroll down a little bit. Um, actually, just 30 should be fine. Okay, perfect. Then inside of here, um, let's go ahead and add our heading, our paragraph, and our tab component. Our heading is going to be a H2. And, um, you know, actually, I think I need to add a div block to add all these things in because we're going to be using some max width. Um, make sure. Okay. So with this selected, I want to add padding left of six to kind of mimic what we did before. Um, so six VW. And over here, you notice it has a max width of 493. So with that div block that we added, I can simply do max width 493. Okay, awesome. Um, this is gonna be amenities, if I can spell it. And this is just a little bit of uh, hipster lorem ipsum. <laughs> I like using hipster lorem ipsum when I need to. Uh, this kind of makes it fun. And, um, then we can start working on styling this. First though, uh, let's go ahead and get this image to appear over here. And um, what I was running into when I was kind of preparing this tutorial was that um, it would be easy if I could just 
click tabs, make tabs a flex box, have the content on the left and the links on the right hand side. But the issue that we have is that you can't put any non tab link items inside of the tabs component. And that makes sense. Webflow is trying to protect the integrity of this component so that they don't break when you're trying to use them. But it does make it a little bit challenging to figure out, okay, how do we do this particular um, layout? <laughs> so I uh, so have to do a, a few things. So inside of, um, well, the first thing we're going to do is with the flex horizontal, we're going to make this position relative. And that means that we're going to try to get the image to the top left corner of here by referencing this uh, item. And then inside of the child 50, we're going to add a div lock and name it placeholder image. Placeholder image. I'm not going to do anything with it right now, just so I can show you guys what I mean. And then, um, whoops. Um, inside of tab pane, uh, I want to do a, um, some interesting stuff. So let's go ahead and call it tab pane. Um, we'll call this, let's just go ahead and name everything like we have done previously. I think we need another tab. Um, And then uh, now we can go in here and make sure that pane is attached to all of the different tab panes. Uh, oops, there we go. Okay, and then I think we still have to name the tab menu. menu and let's go ahead and give our tabs a class as well or simply tabs okay then inside of well the tab pane um, let's go ahead and add our image and the first one is like the podcasting studio which I think is this one okay and um, I think what I'd like to do is content tab pane. I think tab pane, I want to um, set the image ratio here. So we can do height zero pixels, padding of 75%. Okay. And then with the image selected, we can do uh, tabs image. We can do a uh, position absolute full um, and height 100%. Uh, I always do that. <laughs> and let's make width 100% just to um, keep it from having funky weirdness. <laughs> okay, and we're having the same issue with that stretched imageness. Um, but we can do the same thing by going up to uh, up here, tabs, image. Oops, I forgot the period at the front. And this should now be uh, looking correct. And then with tabs content, this is what we want to absolute position to the top left. Um, so tabs content, position, absolute. Um, I think it's going to be up here, maybe. Oh, I don't know where it is. Um, actually, if I give this a uh, width of 100%, okay, it's still down there. If I do top left, um, Um, oh, it's because I think tabs is set to position relative. So we have to make sure tabs is set to position static. There we go. Um, so now with tabs content selected, let's give it a height not of 100, but of 50%. And uh, so now this is showing up in the correct place. Um, by the way, let's get our dummy and make it 100 VH. And uh, now we're running into a little bit of an issue with all this absolute positioning. So if I turn on x-ray mode and click on the section right here, 
You'll notice that the section actually ends at the bottom of the tab links. And that's because these items are either static or relative positioning, whereas the image is absolute. And so uh, it's kind of like the website is not taking, or the browser is not taking into account the height of this image. Um, but we needed to take that height into account because when we add the section below it, um, we want it to be based off of this image and not off of the tab links. <laughs> so, um, so a good fix is that placeholder image that we added previously the placeholder image. Uh, so we can do the same thing uh, where we have it zero pixels and 75% of um, padding. And now when I click on section, you'll notice that, that it's not taking into account the size of the image. And that's simply because our placeholder image is the same size, same ratio as these images. So I know that was a little bit complex, but uh, Honestly, it was like the easiest possible solution I could find <laughs> to making this layout. So hopefully uh, you guys are able to follow along. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is with the tab links. Um, instead of, well, let me take off x-ray mode. Instead of having these be uh, position or display inline block, I want them to be block so that they're showing up um, uh, like a chart. And then let's take off the background color. Um, and if I scoot over here, I know that there's eight pixels of padding on the bottom and 24 on the top. So eight, 24, zero, zero. And then this text block is actually P jumbo. And then let's add an image that will be our icon. So we'll just, I love this car icon. I just think it's really fun. <laughs> we'll use Flexbox to get these to present horizontally and the line in the middle. Uh, let's move over this one to the right hand side. And then let's give this a class of icon uh, amenities. Amenities icon. And it'll have padding of eight on the right and I think 16 on the right. Okay. And um, all right, so that looks correct. Okay. And the reason that this still has a background gray is because it's got a state of current. Um, so we just got to take off, even though that says transparent, um, we have to we kind of redo the transparency there. Oh, we forgot the um, border bottom. So one pixel of our dark value at 12%. All right, so let's copy over dedicated podcasting studio. This is conference rooms. presentation space and my personal favorite assigned parking <laughs> which is what the car is for all right so let's replace these icons this is the microphone uh, this is the conference table and this is the podium all right um, next let's go ahead and copy this image and in tab one, paste it in our content. In tab two, which is conference rooms, um, let's go ahead and change it to the conference room photo, which I think is this one. Uh, tab three is the presentation space, which I think is this first one. And tab four is um, the drone shot of the parking. Okay, then um, the next thing I want to do is um, flex vertical align middle for a combo class and we're going to use flex box to align this in the middle and to the left. <coughs> awesome. And then uh, with the max width, I think I'm just going to give it a little bit of padding on the, or maybe margin on the bottom. 
um, just because optically, even though it was exactly in the middle, optically it felt a little bit off. Okay, and I think um, the last thing we need to do is add that little progress bar. So let's add a dev block and we'll call it tabs um, progress bar. And I need to make sure tab link is set to position relative, which it is. And we need to set the progress bar to absolute aligned to the bottom. Um, it's going to be a size of two <coughs> with a background of our blue. And let's just move it down like negative one pixels. Um, so that it's over the existing border. Okay, perfect. And let's go ahead and copy it to the other links. <coughs> Excuse me. And now we get to have fun with animations. So uh, we're gonna add an element trigger on tab change. Start an animation. And oh, <laughs> you can see that I was already messing with this earlier. Um, but we'll add a new one called tabs active. Select the progress bar and um, uh, use size. So for the initial state, I want the width to be zero. And then I want the size um, to go to auto. Uh, meaning like what it was originally. And I want it to take seven seconds. Um, so I think if we did that correctly, uh, it's not doing anything. Oh, it's doing it there. Why didn't it work? Oh, why isn't it working there? Oh, I think it's because um, this, we need to set tab one as the active one. All right, so now it's working. All right, pardon the interruption. Um, I think it's apparently uh, break time. <laughs> so um, let's finish really quickly. Um, okay, so with the tab link selected, go back to interactions and we also need to start an animation uh, for when it's deselected. So basically what we can do is just get rid of this one and have it go back to the initial state, but I want the duration to be zero. Um, okay, so, um, so let's make sure that this works. If I go down to this one, it goes back to zero, perfect. Now the way that we can apply this to all four of these is just by hitting class down here. And that way, whenever uh, an element has a class of tab link attached to it, it'll have this animation. Um, so the way we can make sure that works is that now every time I click on this, the progress bar is gonna start to move. All right, and then um, to make, kind of for the finishing touch, we're gonna add the autoplay uh, to this. And this is a little bit of custom code and I found this on the Webflow forum, and the code came specifically from uh, Pepperclip. So uh, Pepperclip, I'm not sure what your name is, but thank you. And um, we're just gonna copy this custom code here. And come over here, go to our pages, open up home, and we're gonna wanna paste this. Oops, I already did that apparently. <laughs> but I wanna paste this uh, here in the before body tag. And you'll notice a couple of things that um, tabs menu and tab link are um, addressed in this. So if you want this to work, you have to make sure that tab these, um, these tab links and the tabs menu have the exact same name as uh, what's in the custom code. Otherwise this won't work. Then um, I wanna change this to 7,000. In other words, seven seconds. Uh, so it matches our progress bar. 
and uh, you can't you can't see custom code um, uh, here in the designer so let's go ahead and publish this and then on the live site let's make sure that the tabs are working correctly <laughs> Perfect, okay. So the custom code is working and now, whenever the progress bar reaches the end of the line, it switches to the next line, but we can still go ahead and switch to a different one if we want to, and that won't interrupt the custom code. It'll still switch to the next link uh, when it reaches those seven seconds. Um, all right, so that was the end of section three. And in the last section, that should be a lot shorter. We're gonna be finishing out with this um, call to action and the footer. And the call to action is gonna be fun because we're gonna be using a uh, blend mode. So if you ever use a uh, blend mode like multiply or uh, overlay or soft light, hard light, um, you, can, you can use those um, uh, in Webflow. Uh, we're going to be using a little bit of custom code, <laughs> I keep saying that, um, to achieve that. But I wanted to show it to you guys because it's really helpful and fun to use. So stick around and join me for section four. Alrighty, welcome to the fourth and hopefully final um, section of this tutorial. And uh, this call to action is pretty easy um, to implement. But what makes it interesting is we're going to be using uh, CSS blend modes. Um, and uh, if I click in here, you'll notice that there's a gradient fill on top of the background image and it's got a um, blend mode of multiply and I want to be able to do that in my project so that uh, whenever the client uploads a new photo that multiply effect will always be there giving it that kind of like brand look so um, I wanted to show you this this is the W3 website and this is showing us the different values that we can use so right here you have background blend mode and then you can use any of these um, you might be familiar with them from Photoshop or Sketch, like Multiply, obviously, Overlay, Darken, Saturation, Color. Uh, so, so really neat that we can do all of this. And for the most part, um, it has widespread browser support. So here I'm caniuse.com. I just search for blend mode, and you'll see that for the most part, uh, everything is green. Uh, there's a few red spots like IE Mobile and Edge, uh, older versions of Edge. Uh, but for the most part, most browsers support blend mode. So just want you to be aware that there are some that don't. Um, so there's a little bit of catching up to do so. All right, let's get started by actually implementing this. So uh, we're going to add a new section. Oops. Let's see if I can add it in here somehow with that. There we go. Add a section. We're going to give it a combo class of margin top 120. Um, I wanted to give the call to action section a little bit more space to give it um, like more presence, kind of um, call it out a little bit. I don't think we've done a container class yet. So I have to add a new container, and essentially it's 85%. Um, maximum width is 1440 and margin auto. I've um, previously done episodes on containers and the responsive video, so I won't go into that now. And then add a new div block, and we'll call this CTA. And with the CTA, uh, we're going to have a height of 300, a corner radius of 4, and we're going to add two background type things. The first is an image, I guess this first one here, I set to cover, and that's essentially the same thing as object fit cover, by the way. And then um, we're just going to kind of manually move this image until it looks um, pretty good. That looks fine. And then, by the way, um, in the design file, I flipped it so that the people were on the right. Um, but just for the sake of <laughs> not having to do too much work for this, uh, we'll just leave this be. All right, so this is what it looks like without the, um, without the multiply effect added. So I'm going to go to HTML embed, scroll down so we can see our CTA, open the code editor, and um, if I add CTA here, and I stole this uh, earlier, but uh, this says background blend mode multiply. So if I did this correctly, hopefully you'll see this change. All right, so now we see that the, um, the background the, uh, the top background is multiplying over the image, which is exactly what we want. And now we can go in and we can actually change this a little bit so that, um, like for example here, it's gonna be 
our dark value at 20% and our other dark value at 100%. And we're actually gonna make it a radial uh, starting from the bottom left uh, to the farthest corner. All right, that's looking pretty good. Next, we're gonna use Flexbox to align everything in the middle. And let's add a heading. And with the CTA selected, we can go ahead and set the colors to white because everything will be white basically in here. And we previously used a uh, 6VW kind of as a padding. Um, so let's just follow that pattern and we can add try space. Okay, add another div block. And oops, I guess this needs to be vertical. Um, so align to the left in the middle. And then we can just copy and paste this button. And this button says buy a pass. And then we're going to copy and paste another button. And let's give this a combo class of outline. And um, what do I want to do? OK. So now that we have an outline button, one thing that's important is we have to go ahead and add the border to both. Oops. Otherwise, um, they'll look like they're different sizes. So with outline, I want the um, background to be transparent um, and everything else looks correct. But I will say on hover, I do want it to have that dark blue background. Okay, and then we'll add a margin left of 16 as a combo class because not um, probably not every outline button will have that margin left. And I think that might be it. Oh, the shadow. Um, so let's go ahead and add that quickly. So, um, oops. I think it should be this one. So zero, one, two, zero. This one is 0480. And then one last one that is 1632. Um, so if I preview this and um, this is looking perfect okay and then oh I guess this should really say contact us now that I think about it uh, the last thing we'll do is get rid of our dummy and um, instead of the body we'll add a new section and we'll want to make sure this is called footer and we'll add a class of section light blue and then margin top 120 and that still should carry over the, the settings that we need perfect um, and then all we have to do is uh, actually what I might do is duplicate this and call it um, footer section because I think this is actually 40 not um, 80 Let's add our container. Oops. And inside of our container, um, let's add a link block. With the container selected, let's add a combo class of text align center. And inside of that link block, let's add our logo. Actually, we can just copy it from the top of the website here. Awesome. Then with the container selected, let's add another div block. And we'll call this um, footer links wrapper. Let's add a text link. 
and we can just use the nav link um, class that we created at the very beginning of this tutorial and take off the underscore um, but we do want to add a footer link combo class because this has a little bit more spacing between them so the uh, padding is actually 32 as opposed to 16 there's three go with footer links wrapper I believe that's a spacing of 40 I think yeah um, locations amenities contact okay then with the this one selected this is actually zero zero yeah and then let's add a new dev block and we'll call this a footer sub. We'll add a, the dark blue background. Make sure that's got a margin of 40. And I can't remember what the padding is in here, 16 on either side. Alrighty. And then inside that, let's add a paragraph. Um, actually, no, that's wrong need to add a text link um, we can text align center and let's steal this content and we can call this a p2 for paragraph number two and it's 14 over 16 M's um, one point five is fine and let's take off the underscore, give it our 60% um, dark value. But I do want to give it a hover effect so that um, people know it's a link. So um, we'll give it our dark blue uh, on hover. Um, okay, I think that does it for I think we're done. Um, anyways, um, thank you if, if you're still with me uh, after, I think it's probably like an hour, hour and a half. If you're still with me into this tutorial, thank you so much for sticking uh, through it. I hope that the content was helpful to you and I hope that you now find it easier to implement sliders and tabs into your own projects. If it was, I hope that you'll consider subscribing um, to this channel. Um, I think I recently just hit 500 subscribers and so I was pretty excited about that and I really appreciate the support. I've had a lot of people leave comments about how helpful the tutorials were and that's really encouraging because obviously uh, doing this for free and just as a little passion project and so so your guys' encouragement means a lot. So thank you so much for that. And uh, again, I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys in the next one.